Hi guys, um, I'm doing my presentation on Haim Jina. I think that's how you pronounce that. Um, so he was born in Israel in 1922. Uh, he was a clinical psychologist and an elementary school teacher. His major contributions to the field um, included humanizing rather than dehumanizing students. So he had, he placed a big emphasis on concern for students' feelings. He wanted students always to feel valued and seen. Um, he was actually the first in the field to acknowledge the importance of how a teacher talks to students, both in shaping student behavior and also either building or crushing the student's self-esteem. Um, so people hadn't really given that much consideration before him. Also, his um, another big contribution was congruent communication. So congruent communication is basically um, a style of communication between student and teacher um, that avoids confrontation and seeks to validate the feelings of others. So um, the teacher always needs to make a point to speak to the situation, not to the student's character. So basically trying to keep things from getting personal, um, separating the deed from the doer. So um, a teacher can, you know, comment on inappropriate student behavior without making personal attacks to, to the student. Uh, congruent communication also sets clear expectations for behavior so that everybody knows what's expected and there's no surprises. And my favorite part of com congruent communication is it treats students as equals, capable of making good decisions. So I hate it when teachers belittle students and even um, like unintentionally, a lot of times it seems like teachers, you know, sometimes talk down to students. And to me, like, how, how are you going to foster um, an environment of respect and mutual trust when you're talking to your students like they're four year olds? Um, so I like that he included that. Um, the next tenet is that there's only accept unacceptable behavior, not unacceptable students. So that's a little bit what I talked about before with the commu congruent communication to separate the deed from the doer. Um, teachers should avoid equating achievement with worth. So um, if students feel like their only worth in the teacher's eyes becomes from academic achievement, then, you know, for many students, school will feel like a game that just isn't worth playing because the stakes are high and there can only be a few winners, really. So um, teachers should make it a point to separate those two, a student's worth, to make it clear to the students that their, their self-worth is not um, tied up in their academic achievement, that they can still be good people and be performing poorly in school. Um, and the last one is that punishment, this one's interesting, punishment is actually counterproductive um, in his eyes. So in all cases, mm, he says that it doesn't inspire students to improve. It just at best maybe could be like a very short term solution to a problem, but then it has like no long term benefits. So he does not condone punishment like in any in any way. So that's pretty interesting and radical. Um, all right, so strategies. Communicate insane messages. Sane messages uh, address the problem without attacking the student. This is related to the congruent communication. And an interesting part about this is that um, teachers can express their own anger using sane messages. So if a student does something you know, crazy, instead of the teacher making a statement that sounds like they're attacking the student, the teacher can say like, I feel very angry right now, or I feel, you know, I'm very upset with what just happened. And teachers are allowed to say this. They're people with, you know, they're humans with emotions. They can get upset too. Um, next is uh, avoiding why questions. So you don't want to say, you don't want to ask questions like, why can't you get your work done on time? Or why are you always late to class? These are real questions. These are criticisms uh, disguised in the form of questions. So that's a no-no. Also, use laconic language. So basically be brief. Um, don't give unnecessarily detailed instructions because, again, it just belittles students. Also bores them. They just start to tune you out. So keep it, keep it short, short and sweet. Next, redirect rather than correct. So you want to tell students what you want them to do rather than what you don't want them to do. I like that one a lot. And finally, um, attach rules to objects. This is like more applicable for younger students. Um, but one example would be like at, at home, um, parents, you know, to say like the bed is not for jumping instead of 
don't jump on the bed. So if an object is only supposed to be used for one certain thing to make it clear what the object is to be used for, it feels less like a personal attack that way. All right, so some examples. So imagine you have a student wandering around the room. Um, instead of saying, stop wandering around the room, you would wanna say, return to your seat and continue working. So this would be an example of redirect rather than correct. You're telling the student what you want them to do rather than focusing on what they're doing that you don't want them to do. Next example, um, you are giving instructions for an assignment. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you two options of how to give instructions and you tell me which one sounds better. Here's option number one. Okay, so I want you to take out that article we read last week. Um, what I think it was called El Matador or something like that. Anyway, so get that out and spend a few minutes just looking for any work that you had trouble with or you didn't understand. Um, you can highlight them, circle, underline them to remember better which ones they are. Then you can use your dictionaries. And yes, you can use your phone, so please stay on task, guys. Don't start Snapchatting. Look up the words that you didn't know. And then I want you to write out the definitions and then also use them in a sentence like, you know, an example sentence. Okay, is there any questions? And now option B, take out the article El Matador, underline the words you didn't know. Which one of those is clearer and easier to understand? Which one do you think the students probably listen to better? Um, so you want to give instructions in bite-sized chunks. Just give literally the instructions that the kids need to do right at that moment, and then you can give more instructions along the way as you go. And last example, um, you overheard a very rude remark made from one student to another. Which option do you think would be a sane message? Option A, how could you even say something like that? Or option B, I am disgusted by what you just said to her. So the the correct answer is option B. That's a sane message. You can, you know, you can express pretty strong emotions, like I'm disgusted by what you just said, that's fine because the teacher is keeping it focused on his or her own feelings um, and not making it personal by saying, how could you do something like that, which has the implication of you're a bad person, you're worthless. Um, and so teachers, yeah, teachers can express their own emotions by using those I-focused same messages. So that's all. All right. Thanks for watching.